So my name is Kevin Rojek. That's R-O-J-E-K. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI Pittsburgh field office. The first thing I want to say is that the FBI stands with the people of Butler County in western Pennsylvania, and our hearts go out to the victims of this heinous act which occurred today. This is our community, and I want to let the public know that the FBI has deployed a number of our resources, including investigative agents, our evidence response team, bomb technicians, and we have additional resources coming from other field offices, as well as from FBI headquarters, including our evidence response from Quantico, Virginia. We have intelligence analysts as well, working from our field office in Pittsburgh, working feverishly to attempt to identify the individual who did this and any motives behind why this was done. Right now, we need the public's help. Anyone who was on scene who saw anything, who identified any information, please report that to the FBI using either the phone number 1-800-CALL-FBI or online at fbi.gov slash butler. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. Again, at this time, we are not prepared to identify who the shooter is. Uh, we are close to that identification, and as soon as we are 100 percent confident in who that individual is, we will share it with the press. With that being said, also, we do not currently have an identified motive, although our investigators are working tirelessly to attempt to identify what that motive was. At this time, I'm going to turn over the podium to Colonel Chris Paris from the Pennsylvania State Police. Thank you very much. My name is Colonel Chris Paris, P-A-R-I-S, Commissioner of Pennsylvania State Police. I would just like to say that the State Police have been in regular contact with the Governor's Office and the full support and assets of the entire agency are behind the FBI and our other federal and municipal partners to assist with this investigation. The thoughts and prayers of the Pennsylvania State Police are likewise with the victims of this terrible act. Uh, we are prepared to support this investigation in any way, shape, or form, and we stand ready to participate in a full, fair, and competent and thorough investigation. To give you an operational rundown, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Operations, Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, is behind me, and he will discuss the operational portion that's being conducted by the Pennsylvania State Police. Lieutenant Colonel Bivens. Good evening. So let me describe for you a little bit about the, uh, the scene that we have over there. As you know, uh, uh, you know, there was a grandstand, a very large area, a lot of people there when this all unfolded. The former president had uh, come out and begun to speak shortly after 6 o'clock this evening, excuse me, this evening, uh, and within about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, a number of sounds were heard, and it became apparent that shots were being fired um, in that direction. It was a chaotic scene. Uh, law enforcement, I believe, acted heroically, quickly identifying and, uh, and, and neutralizing the threat as well as responding to assist the various victims. PSP had a significant presence on the scene along with all of our federal partners at the time of the shooting. We have since enhanced that presence significantly, bringing in resources from all over the Commonwealth to ensure that we have a speedy, thorough investigation. Uh, we are working very closely uh, with the FBI as we work through this. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, you know, because of the variety of crimes that have been committed, some are under federal jurisdiction, some are under state jurisdiction. And so, uh, you know, we're working through all of that, not an issue at all. We work seamlessly 
but uh, the FBI has maintained the lead on the attempted assassination. PSP will take the lead on the homicide and the shootings of the other individuals uh, in the uh, in the uh, grandstand area. And so there are a lot of witnesses uh, to be interviewed, a lot of things to be processed. There were some complicators that uh, uh, hopefully the next time we speak we can describe for you, but some complicators that slowed down uh, some of the processing and the uh, uh, positive identification of the shooter. But uh, know that uh, at this time, we have no reason to believe that there is any other existing threat out there. Uh, we are doing everything we can uh, to make sure that uh, this is thoroughly investigated and that if there uh, is any information developed that anyone else was involved that uh, between PSP and the FBI, that will very quickly be followed up on. So I think at this time, we would open it up to questions uh, from all of you. Was this a lone rule like that? Again, I, I think it's uh, too early to say that. We have one shooter tentatively identified, but uh, uh, we're, we're not uh, uh, stopping there. We're following up on a lot of information. Uh, it will be some time until we can conclusively say uh, or answer that question, I think. How often do you say London's not getting hiding up there? I mean, we saw snipers up there, you know, as the crowd kind of rolling in. It looked like they had a pretty good viewpoint to check everyone else. How long did that hide up there? Uh, again, that will all be part of the investigation, but that will all be part of the investigation. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that uh, preliminarily it appears everything unfolded very quickly. So, uh, you know, again, we'll have more information on that, but um, it's, it's just too early to start definitively uh, saying this happened at this exact time. And That's correct. Uh, we'll have that information for you. It was some distance outside of the Colonel, security can you room. comment on reports that there were uh, people who saw someone on the roof and tried to alert authorities? We're following up on those. I will tell you that I am aware of those, and, uh, and I am aware that uh, law enforcement had responded to a number of reports of suspicious activity. Um, the specific response to this will be all part of the after action, but yes, law enforcement was responding uh, to check on several suspicious occurrences. What were the other suspicious occurrences? Uh, that will all be part of the investigation. So you said that you're close to identifying uh, the shooter. Could you at least confirm that he is from Butler County, Pennsylvania? Um, is there anything else? Did he have any affiliation with that company, do you know? So again, we're not prepared at this time to provide the identity of the potential shooter. We're in the process of doing the confirmation, and once we have the confirmation, we'll release the name officially to the press. But at this time, we, we can't give any further information on the potential shooter. No, it's a matter of doing biometric confirmations. So there was no identification on the individual, as an example. Um, so you know, we're looking at photographs right now, and we're trying to run his DNA and get biometric confirmation on. Would you be able to comment just what police found left behind? Like any possible devices? Did you find any extra guns? Just anything else you'd be willing to comment? Not at this time. No, we're, we're still in the process of an active investigation. So we'd like to reserve releasing any information like that until we have more facts. From the FBI's perspective, no. We did not have any specific threat information related to this event. Can I ask, you talked about how it happened so quickly, and we know that there is at least two casualties, including the gunman at this point, that we're aware of. It could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. Are oh, absolutely. Can you comment more about that and how it's taken care of so quickly? So I think the credit goes to not only the Secret Service who was on site, but also the state and local partners who were there on site and were able to react immediately when the incident occurred. Do you know how many officers fired their weapons? I do not. I understand that it's very early and there still would be a lot of questions, but I mean, is this a failure of security? Really, at this point, we're not going to make that assessment. There's, there's an active investigation. A lot of 
things need to occur investigatively to make those determinations of you know, what, if any, failures there were. So we really, we can't comment on that at this time. Do you guys say Secret Service had checked these buildings or were keeping a close eye or? <laughs> really have to defer to Secret Service uh, for those questions. Are you saying the location where the shooter was located? Yes. I don't have any any information on that. You'd have to refer to Secret Service. When, when do you think you will release, when will the name of the shooter be released? I mean, any inkling of when that might happen, tomorrow, or? So that'll be, as, as soon as we've confirmed 100%, we're willing to release that. So if we have, you know, as far as the contact information for the press, we'll, we should be able to do that within the next few hours, I imagine. There was a vehicle being checked not far from here. We've also heard of possible related scene in Bethel Park. Is there anything you can tell us tonight about other areas where law enforcement may be searching in relation to this event? Again, right now we're tracking down all leads and doing all interviews and tracking anything that we can regarding suspicious locations, vehicles, locations, interviewing individuals. So it's all related to this event, but I can't confirm or deny anything that's going on beyond that. Can you tell us about the weapon that the shooter used? As far as the, the details of the weapon? Yeah, what, what kind of rifle was Do you want to come on that? What did he use? No, until it's confirmed, I wouldn't come on that. Okay, uh, yeah, until we have the confirmation of who the shooter is, and we'll release that as part of the investigative details later. You said the FBI is deploying extra resources, and one of the things that you said was bomb technicians. So is this standard procedure, or do you have reason to believe that there are bombs somewhere in Butler County? You just want to keep swapping through that. It's problem. primarily standard procedure of any suspicious packages. In this case, there was identification of suspicious packages around where the shooter was, and so we deployed in an abundance of caution bomb assets to make sure that those were cleared. Uh, for investigators to move safely in the area. We're still working on, it's still an active crime scene, so I'm not going to say that the scene is 100% clear at this time. Why are there any Secret Service agents here right now for this press conference? So Secret Service wasn't available for the press conference at this time. I understand what packages are you talking about. You're talking about packages, but the suspicious packages like one here and here. Really anything. Um, I don't have specifics on what they were looking at, but but, but you know, there's people in the crowd will leave bags as they're fleeing the scene like this. So any suspicious packages we have to treat as it may be an explosive device. And possibly, you know, the explosive device was that I guess the Secret Service turned out to talk about, I guess. But when you guys jumped into action, all the law enforcement were able to take down the shooter. How quickly did everybody jump in and who ended up taking it out? So it was immediate. And it was, we're still trying to figure that out. So we're, We'll wait till we have more definitive information regarding that investigatively. What about the bystanders, the person in the crowd? Do you have any information about how they were uh, how they were killed? My understanding was it was from the the shooter, um, but again, those those will be details that are released later. Do you search homes or apartments as a part of your method of identifying the individual? So if if that's where the leads take us, absolutely. Was was Donald Trump? I don't. I don't have that specific information as far as the injuries to the former president. I understand you're releasing the suspect's identification right now, but as you know, is this person known to you guys? Is he somebody that you guys have been looking at? Do you have threats he's possibly made online? Do you have any information about him? Again, the information that we currently have, we're we're looking at that obviously very intently, and as we know that information, we'll release that as well. So we'll, we'll need to plan another time for a follow-up press conference. Oh, we're looking at all investigative leads and all, all everything from, and that's why we asked the public, because I'm sure there'll be cell phone video, there'll be all kinds of information that we'll use to fully flesh out exactly what happened here. I know you're saying you can't say what type of gun it is, but do you know how many shots were fired? I don't. I, I don't have that information as far as that. That'll come out in the investigation as well. Is there an identification tonight on the other victims? As, as far as the civilians? The, the, the civilians that were injured and killed. Yeah. 
So we do have identification on those. We're not prepared to release it at this time. Uh, we have notified a number of family members, but uh, they have not had an opportunity to notify extended family and things. Uh, I would uh, confirm for you that we did have one individual killed, and I know I heard uh, somebody say about two victims. There were three in total besides the former president. So two critically wounded, one killed. At this point, you know they were sitting near each other and where in relation to the former president? Uh, I don't have their exact seating um, by individual. Uh, again, that will all be part of the investigation, but the Scott, their shots were scattered somewhat, and so they weren't uh, just into one particular uh, location. You're saying just one fatality as of right now? Yes. The shooter and the one fatality? The shooter plus one fatality. Oh, thank you. Do you so there was one victim of the shooter who was killed, and then the shooter was killed. Yes, ma'am. When is it they said say they saw a semi-automatic rifle used by the shooter? Can you share any more details of it? That's what you're looking for. Uh, I've heard those reports as well. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, we do uh, have a good idea of what the weapon was. But again, that's all part of the, uh, the ongoing investigation. I, and I'm not trying to be cagey about that. Uh, you know, when uh, the SAC talked about the need to be very methodical and to be cautious, with that scene, uh, we are doing just that. We don't want anybody else getting hurt. And uh, candidly, there are some concerns uh, that, that we'll be able to talk more about later on uh, about just what those concerns are and continue to be. Did you talk to the shooter's family yet? That's all part of the investigation. After the event, there were a lot of really angry people. Um, are, are you monitoring? Have there been any uh, threats in response to this? Are you worried? Have there been any specific threats? That's certainly a concern, and uh, you know we're monitoring that whole situation. I mentioned that you know we're bringing a lot of assets to bear, and so like the FBI uh, utilizing their analysts, we also have the Pennsylvania Criminal Intelligence Center. We will utilize uh, the resources of our intelligence division and the Criminal Intelligence Center to be able to monitor uh, for concerns about any threats, uh, regardless of the the side of the issue or the political spectrum, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we try and avoid any further violence. But no, nothing specific so far? No, sir. Without identifying them by name, can you say anything about the, uh, the other folks who were injured or killed? Uh, were they adults, men, male, female, anything Ages? else? Uh, they were adults and they're male. All, all three? Yes. How difficult the day is to see the department now, or all the departments to talk to these family members, including the civilians who were gunned down while they just went to a rally and try and, you know, celebrate, I guess, the upcoming election? What are those conversations like, and how do you kind of get through that? We have trained investigators, and we're partnered hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the FBI, again, because we've got some federal violations, some state violations, and so our investigators are going out and methodically. We have a large team of investigators uh, that are going out, dividing up these interviews, and uh, trying to conduct them as quickly as possible. And then there will be follow-ups. You know, with the, uh, the, the FBI asking for people to call in tips, I have no doubt that we will receive a lot of additional information that will also require follow-up. But again, we're working very well together, and uh, it's, a, it's a, only a short matter of time until we get through all of those interviews. How close a call was it for, for President Trump? There were no police hit with bullets. From your and experience, how close a call was it for? Uh, I'm not going to speculate or, or comment on, on that. Have any of you talked to the president? Did any of you have any kind of reaction? No. No. How, Which law enforcement agencies were tasked with securing this particular rally outside of the United States Secret Service? Well, Secret Service always has the lead on, uh, on securing something like this, but then they work very closely. Uh, it's a... It, uh, and, and I hate to use the word routine, but it, it is a fairly routine uh, matter for all of our agencies to work jointly with the Secret Service. And it really depends on the venue, uh, on what information is out there, what, what uh, number of resources are de uh, devoted to it. Uh, and, and we work with them to uh, provide whatever is requested by the Secret Service, but they're the lead in that security. Was there anything about this venue that made it particularly difficult to secure? You know, I, I would defer to the Secret Service to answer uh, that. They would have done the initial uh, assessment.
Was the rooftop part of what was being secured? Was the rooftop, given its proximity to the event, part of that process? It's my understanding that was outside of the perimeter. Did this shooter have any previous criminal history? We're not going to comment on anything about the shooter. Did the agency deny Trump's team extra security? Any of the agencies that are out there? Not that I'm aware of. If Trump had been the nominee already, would he have had additional security for this event? There again, Secret Service has the lead, and I'm not going to comment or speculate on what may or may not be provided at any given point, depending on their status as a candidate. What I will tell you is that, in my experience, the Secret Service does an excellent job of maintaining security on protectees. They're very cautious. They don't hesitate to ask for resources, and candidly, we don't hesitate to supply those resources. Deputy Colonel, you're asking for the public's help. Can you elaborate and be more specific about what you would really like to see from the public? Is it videos, photos, personal accounts? I think the videos and photos would be very helpful, and I think that once the shooter is identified, anyone that has specific information on that shooter, that would be very helpful as well to help us assess motive. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we are absolutely not taking for granted that this was a lone wolf attack, and so we would be looking for any additional information that might point us toward anybody else that may have had a hand in this. Sir, at this point, what is the main focus of the investigation? What's the most important thing for you right now, a few hours? Well, there's not any one single focus. I mean, certainly the immediate focus was life safety, getting the former president out of there and to care, getting care to the other victims, and trying to secure the scene as quickly as possible. It shifted then from a life safety priority to then an investigative priority. And so I guess if I had to point to where we are right now, the single greatest priority would be to identifying a motive and whether there was anyone else involved. We're just beginning the political season. Are you guys concerned with all of these rallies that happen and how they're set up? Is this going to change maybe the venues? Again, I would refer you to the Secret Service in terms of what they work out with the campaigns. We will continue to supply resources, as I'm sure the FBI will, and local partners as well. When this was announced, it was quite a few days of a heads up that people were getting ready to come to this Trump rally. From a law enforcement perspective, when you announce a big event like this, all that time in advance of a week out, does it give people more time to plan something like this? Well, I suppose, but there's a balance, I would think, that any of the campaigns on either side try to weigh. I mean, the point of them announcing it, I suspect, is because they want the crowd. And so it's not up to us in law enforcement to tell them when they should announce or how they should announce or how they should conduct it. We offer our best advice. Again, working hand-in-hand with the Secret Service, offer our best advice of how best to secure and protect that venue. Sir, considering how many people were there, and you have packed in there, and you have somebody in an elevated position with potentially a high-powered rifle, how lucky is it that we're only talking about a couple of victims, as sad and tragic as that is? Well, we're certainly grateful that we don't have even more victims. And again, in terms of how this could have occurred, that will be part of this after-action report and an investigation that occurs so that we can hopefully ensure that something like this doesn't happen again. Has an autopsy been conducted yet, or is it scheduled? It has not been conducted yet. Do you have an estimate on how many people were at the rally? I do not. If somebody has videos or photos, where should they send them? So we have the 1-800-CALL-FBI if you have audio tips, and then we set up a specific tip line for audio and video, and that's fbi.gov slash butler. And they should send you just like any video? Anything that anyone has that is related to this incident that they think may be of assistance investigatively, we'll take anything and we'll analyze it and we'll make the determination if it's of investigative value. Go ahead. So from what you've been briefed on, it sounds like law enforcement only knew he was up there until shots were fired. Is that what you're hearing? So that is the assessment at this time. So are you surprised that a sniper was able to fire off a handful of shots at the former president? Again, we're still working through 
the security apparatus that the Secret Service had in place, what potentially happened. That there's going to be a long investigation into exactly what took place and how the individual was able to get access to the location, what type of weapon he had. All that it is really days, weeks, and months of investigation. Able to get off like four or five shots. It is it is surprising, but but again. To get the true, all the details of that will come out later in the investigation. Going back to the perimeter of this building, I think it's really difficult for people to understand that this building is a very high vantage point, some 100 meters away, and where the second floor of this building is. Where is this building located? 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 Where is this building they do the initial security assessments and determine where the different security locations should be, and they're the ones who are in charge of securing the scene. We, along with other state and local assets, are there to support the Secret Service and their mission. How many troopers and agents were at the rally, obviously before the shooting, and how is that number determined, and should perhaps there have been more? So I don't have the specific numbers. I, I doubt you do as well. No, I can speak just for PSP. We had uh, uh, physically on site there probably 30 to 40 uh, members of PSP, but we also have additional resources in the area. Uh, we utilize aviation, for example, and, uh, and a variety of other resources, uh, dogs to sweep beforehand that uh, really aren't counted in, uh, in that. And, and, and again, the number is driven by what the request is from the Secret Service. You know, just uh, in their defense, I mean, what I would want to say is it is incredibly difficult to have a venue open to the public and to secure that against any possible threat, against a very determined attacker. Uh, that, that's a huge lift to try and do it. And, uh, you know, again, uh, the investigation will really uh, give us an opportunity to take a look at where any failures occurred, and what can be done better in the future. Do you know when another briefing might be held? Uh, we don't have one scheduled, but uh, but I would tell you we will uh, we will let you know and give you plenty of notice. Uh, certainly, uh, as as soon as additional things develop that would be uh, noteworthy or of interest to you, we'll get that scheduled and, uh, and and have another with you. Locally, what can residents, businesses expect to happen with the investigation over the next couple of days? Like, what's going to be going on there? The people need well, again, the interviews will all be occurring, and so they may see law enforcement in their communities. Uh, people came from a, a wide area to come to this rally, I'm told. So, um, you know, there's going to be law enforcement uh, fanning out, and, and, and as, as additional calls, photos, videos, come in, um, you know, those additional interviews will result in law enforcement being out in the community conducting those interviews. But, uh, but otherwise, they really shouldn't see any other significant impact in the community. Can you confirm whether it's a male or female, the homicide, the bystander who died? It's a male. A male? Yes. So I'm from a European outlet from, from Poland, and I'm already getting text messages from, you know, back home, and people are asking, how could this happen? What's going on in America? I know that is a philosophical question, but how, how could you talk to the people outside the United States about what happened here in Buffalo? Well, again, what I would say is is a tragic incident that occurred. Um, we're not in a position to start second-guessing how or why or anything else at this point. Just know that it will be thoroughly investigated. Uh, if there is anyone to prosecute, that will be done. And, uh, and we'll move forward. But, uh, but I don't have a good answer for you. We'll just take one last question. I know that PSP said that you guys were not aware of any um, additional requests from the Trump team for security. What about the FBI? Was there an additional request for additional security from the Trump team, and was that denied in any way, shape, or form? No. No, there was no additional request for security that was ever denied by the FBI. What does the FBI do in these events? Like, what is your rule? So we are we, we showed up after the fact. We were monitoring the event, but it was once the incident occurred that we come and we take the primary jurisdiction for the investigation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, as we have additional information, we'll provide it. Thank you. Thank you.